Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to our program today. We are glad to have you, uh, those of you from off campus, we are glad to have you on campus today for our, this day of celebration. And for those of you that are a part of our on-campus community, we appreciate your coming out uh, as we mark another milestone uh, in, the, in our Lipscomb 2010 plan. Uh, today, we have the great opportunity uh, to dedicate the Yearwood House as the, one of our houses here in the uh, village. Uh, the village is a very special residential community that we have here on campus, uh, and we are uh, just thrilled to be able to uh, uh, dedicate this last uh, house in this uh, community uh, today. Uh, we have a, an, a, a program that, of dedication. Uh, Josh Britt, who is the Bachelor of Ugliness at Lipscomb this year, is going to uh, come and lead us in an invocation in just a moment. Uh, we'll also have ref uh, reflections from two students, uh, Mary Morgan Gentry, who is the president of the Student Government Association, and Daniel Smith, who is a junior from here in Nashville, Tennessee, and a resident of uh, Yearwood House as well. Uh, following their remarks, uh, Dr. Randy Lowry will uh, give a dedication uh, for, the, uh, for the building, and then we'll be glad to hear a response from the Yearwood family uh, and uh, from Randall Yearwood, uh, the son of Niall and Russell Yearwood. Uh, following the, the conclusion of the program with Scott McDowell, uh, Suite 305 is open for viewing. I understand that it went through a great deal of scrubbing to be ready for today uh, and uh, that Sam is, has his reputation on the line about how good a shape it is in. So uh, as, uh, as uh, James Brown said, I told these guys, I know what it's like to live in a dorm, but y'all have got to get a wife someday. So that's, uh, uh, so uh, Suite 305 will be open. Once again, welcome to Lipscomb. We are glad to have you here today for a very special day. Uh, and uh, Josh, if you will, come lead us in our prayer. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we're so thankful uh, that you've blessed us with this university. Um, we're so thankful for the faculty uh, that, that bless us every day, and we're thankful for the student body, God. Uh, just the blessing that it is to be a part of, of a school like this, and uh, we're thankful for people like the Yearwoods who have, have also made it such a blessing uh, to be a part of God. Um, we, thank, we thank you for uh, what they've done uh, for us, and um, we just thank you so much uh, for what they've done for us, God. And, um, we ask that you uh, bless this ceremony, God, and just continue to be with us this week. In your name we pray. Amen. Throughout history, the color yellow has been a reminder that the sun as a source of light and warmth is essential to life on earth. The joyful color and sweet fragrance of the yellow rose reminds us of sunny, cheerful feelings of warmth and happiness. It is the most beautiful representation of the color yellow. It is unique as a symbol of friendship, which is the reason we have a bouquet of yellow roses for each of the Yearwood ladies today. If you would please stand as I call your name. Joan Yearwood. Linda Hendon. Caitlin Flo. Pat Ward. And Judy Flatt. And Lisa Flo. The students at Lipscomb University give you these roses today as an expression of our appreciation for everything that you have done for Lipscomb throughout the years. Thank you. Hi, my name is Daniel Smith and I'm a junior accounting major here at Lipscomb. And not only am I a resident here in the village, but I am also one of the four RAs this year. Um, and I also had my own uh, sort of panic attack about an hour ago because 
Um, I'm a guy and I live over here and had a panic attack. Oh no, what did they show my room? Because um, like most guys, I have a sink full of dirty dishes and clothes all over the place. But luckily that's not the case. Um, I'm just going to quickly kind of describe what it's like to live here in the village. Um, when asked what I like most about the village, I really cannot narrow it down to one thing. Um, this year has been amazing and I've really enjoyed every aspect of it. Uh, don't get me wrong, I've lived on campus uh, two years before this year and uh, over in high rise and loved every minute of it, but after a while, 2 a.m. shopping cart races, hallway football games, and uh, sharing bathroom with 25 other guys gets a little bit old. And it's nice to live somewhere where uh, you still have that on-campus atmosphere, but still kind of get the nice uh, apartment feel to it. I'm going to describe real quickly kind of uh, what each apartment consists of. Uh, for the most part, most apartments consist of eight uh, residents living together. Four bedrooms, four bathrooms, and one common room. Uh, so hopefully all eight of you get along. One of the nice things about the village is having your own living and kitchen area. Um, you don't rely just on that microwave that uh, becomes uh, a comfort in the dorm life. And uh, probably my favorite aspect of everything is uh, definitely having my own bathroom, not sharing it with 25 to 50 other people. Um, and as a student here at Lipscomb and as a resident in the village, I'd like to send my thanks to the Yearwood family for everything they've done to this school and especially uh, here in the village providing this opportunity for all of us residents. Thank you. Wonderful to be a part of a community with students like you have heard this afternoon. Uh, their, uh, their, their sense of professionalism in this moment uh, reflects very well on the education they're receiving and the service that they will be providing. I like this statement that has to do with buildings because it also has to do with people. We require from buildings, as from men, two kinds of goodness. First, doing their practical duty well and then that they may be graceful and pleasing in doing it. Two things we require of buildings, that they do all that practical stuff well, uh, but also that they give us a sense of grace and a sense of uh, pleasing as they do it. Uh, I think that's so appropriate as we think about this family and the long tradition of contribution to this institution. Uh, doing well and, and doing it well as we look around the 13 buildings on this campus over the years that have been built uh, by Niall Yearwood. Uh, as we look at the spirit of service and the Board of Trustees and their involvement with this university for about 50 years. When I came here, I heard something that bothered me, but I didn't know what to do about it at the time. Uh, I came and I heard that as we built Allen Arena about 10 years ago, we tore down a residence hall, uh, and that residence hall was named in honor of someone, and it was the, uh, the memory uh, that existed on this campus of that family and their service. Didn't really know what to do with that. Kind of looked around for something else that might have been named, uh, but you know the reality, it was over a decade later before we built the next residence hall, and today we are taking that story and perhaps bringing it around uh, as we named this facility, after about a 10 or 12 years absence, named this facility to recognize that family and to do that as we move into the longer term future. We appreciate so much this family claiming the institution. We appreciate so much 50 years of service and all of the contributions that were made, including those contributions when buildings were built and no charge at all was levied at the university for the services in building them. Uh, we are so appreciative of the family that continues to be involved in Lipscomb University, and now we look at the building behind me and imagine uh, the next generation or two of students who will occupy it, probably 30, 40, 50, 60 years, and they will ask uh, who Yearwood was, and we will have the opportunity to tell them the story, the story that today is completed because once again on this campus is something in their honor. We appreciate so much all of you who perhaps know that story better than some of us live through the years of their service uh, and understand their dedication and understand even more significantly the importance of this moment. And so we dedicate the building in their honor. 
We dedicate it to the service of future generations of students, and we do so feeling very, very blessed by God uh, that not only uh, is this facility something that has goodness in terms of the practical duty it will carry out, but as goodness as we think about those who were so generous uh, to bring about this particular moment. glad today to have representing the family uh, the son of Nile and Russell Yearwood, uh, Randall Yearwood, to give a response. Thank you very much. I know my mother and father would be very pleased with this action today. For my father dearly loved the school dearly loved it. He built the football stadium that's not too far that way and he built that dormitory over by the uh, uh, gymnasium. He built it with his own hands and the sweat. He got down in the ditches, make sure those foundation ditches were right. Then he would go to the telephone and he would beg every friend he got for concrete block, for concrete for bathroom fixtures, whatever he needed, he was down asking for something for this school. Let me tell you something about my father. His parents had no money. He had to support them most of their life. But he was a great believer in college education. And that's why he started the Yearwood Scholarship Fund here. He tried to go to college two times. He wanted to be an architect, so he tried the University of Illinois, and he ran out of money before the first semester was over. He came back and went to Middle Tennessee State Teachers College, which is MTSU today. He had to quit and go to work to support his parents. I'm the first person in the Yearwood family to have a college degree, but I've got cousins here and here that have followed me and she's got degrees like you would not believe. <laughs> I call her a doctor. I've called her some other things too. But <laughs> my father expected me to be at the top of my class and I did not dare let him down. I did that once and I said I'll never do that again. Those of you that are receiving funds from the Yearwood Scholarship Fund, I want to implore you work hard, stay at the top of your class. To him, going to college was hard work, more hard work and good grades, and very little play. I remember when I was in the eighth grade, I came home at the end of the year and I was so thrilled. I made a 99 on the geography final exam. My daddy looked me in the eye and said, Randall, why didn't you make 100? And he wasn't joking either. He believed everyone should work hard, have a life's plan, and execute it very carefully. He wanted everybody to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. He didn't believe in the government taking care of anybody. He believed if a person needed help, they went to their church. They got food, they got clothes, they got whatever they needed to stand on their own two feet. He believed that that way we would have a God-fearing and God-loving nation. He believed that taking wealth from the wealthy and giving it to those that had not worked was wrong. He said that destroys the self-esteem of the receiver and it destroys the hard work for the, for the achiever. It kills the dream of people. And if it continues, you'll have a, a nation of losers. And I'm afraid that's where the leadership of this country is taking us, and I'm glad he's not alive to see it happen. Our government is not created to make wealth for anybody, but to create an environment where you can make wealth for yourself with your own labor. And my father believed that right down to the bone marrow. My mother and father were great role models for me and for others. 
He was a great Bible scholar. He was an excellent Bible teacher. You introduced his great granddaughter that's going to school here, Caitlin Flo. When her mother was expecting her, I went to her father who said, st stand up, David. <laughs> He's afraid to. I went to her father and I said, David, you need to name your daughter after Johnny Cash. He looked at me and thought I could read his mind. Who do you think you are telling me what to name my daughter? And I said, David, just think about it. If you do that, you'll have something that every businessman and woman always wanted, cash flow. <laughs> My father had three granddaughters. You've met Lisa, you've met Linda. He had one named Laurie. Her no count husband took her off to Texas. <laughs> I'm thinking about forgiving him. They've only been married 26 years. I'm not ready to do that just yet. <laughs> but when Laurie came here to school, Jackie Ray Davis, standing right there, you're not here to arrest me, are you? Was the principal of the high school. He didn't want to take her because she was coming here from Harpeth Hall and her grades weren't all that good and I promised him she'd do well. And she did. She was listed in Who's Who. She became a cheerleader. She loved that man right there. She wanted to be here so she could see you. But it's too far from Texas for her to fly. Randy, there you are. I've known every president since 1942 and I was nine years old then. I knew Dr. E.H. Imes well. His daughter was my sister-in-law. I remember why he resigned. It was in 1943, and the church was fighting over post-millennialism and premillennialism. Whenever he went out to talk to somebody about giving money, he said, well, what do you believe in? And he said, this is silly, and resigned and went off to Georgia to become the head of another college. Randy, I want you to know that you are outstanding, and I'm so glad that you have the office you hold. Your vision, your leadership, your ability to plan, your determination to execute your plan, your ability to get people to buy into your plan, your ability to reach out to people in the community is unbelievably good. Your true and real love of God makes you an outstanding person and president. My father would have been proud to have known you. I wish he had. He would be so glad that the Lipscomb has a man who knows what is truly good for the future of the school and has a good understanding of the scriptures. I mean, after all, you've got women teaching men. I remember when I was a, I was a Sunday school teacher at West End Church of Christ who was studying the book, His Needs and Her Needs, and I asked Judy Flatt, sitting right over here, come and talk about her needs, and I had four women get up and walk out of that classroom. I thought, thought maybe the men would, but the women did. And they looked up the elders and wanted to complain. Well, I had gotten their permission ahead of time. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> but, Randy, you've taken this school out of the 17th century. I appreciate you doing that. My father would too. Thanks to you and thanks to the board. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you to the Yearwood family and we will pledge to put this building to good use. Somebody said the college was a once in a lifetime opportunity given to every generation for the renewal of human life. And so we want to use this place to renew, renew human life. And uh, we're so grateful for the work that your daddy did for this place. And we will try to make good on uh, all of his efforts with our efforts. Let's pray together. Father, we love you so much and are grateful for your love for us, your kindness to us. We're thankful for 
this institution and just pray that Lipscomb University would be a place where always your will is done. We're thankful for the Yearwood family and we're thankful for the Yearwood's association with Lipscomb University and just pray a blessing on them. And Father, I pray a blessing on this house that it will be used to bless students for future generations and that uh, real life-changing education will happen here. That is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You're reminded that uh, room 305 is open for you to get a tour to see what the facility looks like. And also there's some refreshments over here to our right. 305 up on the top floor, top level of Yearwood House. And you are dismissed.